This is Think Tech. It's our energy show. Where are we? We're in Hawaii. The state of clean energy. When we talk about the state of clean energy, I'm Jay Fidel, and with me is Peter Rossek from Hawaiian Electric, and Maria Tomei, uh, heavily involved in the uh, Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. Let me put it that way. Okay. And we're going to talk about two things this time. The first thing we talk about what's going on with the grid. There's news about the grid. There's news about the solar build out in uh, utility scale solar. We want to know all about that. In the second part, we want to talk about what's going on with the State Energy Office. Legislation has been proposed to reorganize them. And we'll also talk, we'll continue our conversation from last week when Maria and I had a wonderful time exploring Who the leadership <laughs> issues around energy in Hawaii. That's really juicy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Peter, you're first. All right. Well, as you know, I think I was on the show a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago anyway, talking about some of this. But last year, we put out a request for proposals looking for more solar energy on basically on three of the islands of the five islands we serve. And uh, we got a very impressive group of, of applicants from which we chose eight uh, company eight, uh, projects that had been proposed. We uh, sent those to the whole Public Utilities Commission. Uh, just a short time ago, the Public Utilities Commission approved six of them. Uh, a couple more are still under review. Uh, and we now have sent, uh, since then, we sent to the Commission a request that they let us go out for another phase or another stage, depending on who you're talking to, of this renewable energy acquisition. And this is more specific in some ways. First of all, it very much relates to the fact that AES, the coal plant, will end its uh, contract and go out of service, uh, we presume, in about 2022, in September. That'd be the end of coal in Hawaii. For, in, in effect, there may be a few people, uh, you know, burning coal and, you know, and putting coal in their stockings at Christmas. But, but, but not at the utility. No, no substantial amount, anyway, yeah. certainly not on Oahu. And the other thing is Kahului Power Plant, which we have um, talked about retiring for some time. Kahului Power Plant on Maui, very old workable facility, but, but running, you know, to at the end of its life is going to go out of service by 2024. So five years we have to make sure that we have enough um, capacity to replace that and move along. So we were asking the commission to approve this new RFP. The interesting thing about it, if you're a wonk uh, <laughs> like you are, uh, is that before we were pretty much looking for solar uh, solar with storage. Now we're saying uh, it could be solar with or without storage. It could be wind with or without uh, storage. It could be just storage. Somebody could come in and say, I'm going to build a big, you know, a big battery, and that's going to be able to collect energy during the day when there's a lot and be able to use it other times. But we're also asking for something that's called grid services, which is basically, um, you know, getting the, our customers uh, we're looking for what they, we call aggregators or companies that will collect customers who want to have lower bills and in return for that are willing to move their demand to a certain part of the day or even turn off demand. Uh, and it's more efficient, we believe, and I think the commission believes, rather than we have done this sort of thing in the past. You probably remember we've got a little device on about 35,000 uh, hot water heaters in the state, which we can turn off if we need to. Mm -hmm. um, and this would be a little, much more advanced and more technologically sophisticated. Is but this geographical uh, or is it anywhere and everywhere? It, it could be. It really depends on what the program, is, you know, what the, it's really up to the aggregator to see whether they, how they want to do this. And I think there might be, I don't, I'm not enough of an expert. There may be some advantages in trying to cluster this. And, you know, on relatively small systems, we're kind of clustered automatically. But we, we want these companies to come in and say, we're going to go out and find, find customers, utility customers, who are willing to participate in return for lower bills and some incentives. And we will provide that service to the grid for, you know, a reasonable amount. Or they'll pay us to enable these things to happen. So that's, that makes it sound like um, they could be anywhere. Uh, because they'll be using the existing grid, no special geographical or <coughs> physical structure necessary. Right. It's just a deal you make that, that the customer makes with the utility um, to, to, to take his demand 
at, at hours that are more advantageous. Sure, that's correct. Although it may be that the provider, this grid service aggregator, might wish to have all of their customers in one location. So, you know, they have to put some equipment in and so forth. So they don't want to have one guy in Wai'anae and one guy in Kahala that they, you know, they'd rather have three or four guys in Wai'anae, three or four guys in Kahala. That's their choice. Okay, that's but, so that clarifies yeah, yeah. it for me. The, it's the aggregator you're looking for. The He's aggregator you're looking for, exactly. And he would deal with the customer. Right. And he would... Or she. Thank you. Well, it, probably. <laughs> or it. But, and the other thing that's happening, this is going hand in hand with our grid modernization effort. Because, you know, as we increase the numbers of these diverse projects, big and small, rooftop solar, grid scale solar, wind, uh, storage, uh, all these things need to be coordinated and need to be, you know, we need the 21st century grid to allow us to keep the power on, keep it reliable. And so hand in hand with all this, and the, the mission also approved a grid modernization proposal. We're still talking to them because we don't, we probably don't understand it clearly. Well, what what, is it, what I mean, does it mean, grid modernization? Does it mean I, I look at the whole grid and I see what Parts of it need to be refreshed, replenished, renovated in some way, replaced. And then I make a list of those things, and I go about the business of taking out the old or fixing the old and making new. Is that what it is? That's part of it. The other part of it is, you know, do we have a computer that can uh, balance off uh, all of these rooftop solars with the grid solar, with the wind farm, with, you know, that it is or isn't producing at any given moment that can watch the system? And so that if one of the power plants goes down, it knows to instantly, uh, you know, accommodate that. And, you know, it was difficult but not impossible when you just had conventional generators on the system. They were all pretty predictable. There was a dial. You could turn it up, turn it down. Uh, and, and you only had, uh, you know, a relatively small number of them. Now we have literally 80,000 rooftop solar systems that feed into the grid whether we want them to or not, whether we, we can't control that. We're getting more and more of these 30 to 50 to 60 megawatt solar farms, which, you know, a cloud goes over or, or a bird, you know, forgive me, uh, you know, interferes with the, uh, with the panel and it can create problems. So you need to have a computer system, very sophisticated computer system. Also, you're going to have all these aggregators out there. You, you're not going to be able to, you don't have the time and the energy to pick up a phone and say, can you give me, you know, can you do that, you basically do that with energy management systems and computers. Mm -hmm. So part of it is uh, the kind of resiliency, hardening the grid, putting in you know, metal poles instead of wood poles, putting in new transformers or bigger transformers, all the things you described. And part of it is the, you know, the coordination of all that through information technology and communication technology I mean, we've been doing a lot and that's of... that's brand new. That, that, that's well, taking it, us to another level exactly, of Exactly, it is. And we have, until fairly recently, been using cellular uh, for a lot of the communication, for example. Well, cellular, you know, is okay, but 5G is coming and it works much faster. And cellular doesn't even reach a lot of, you know, little pockets here and there. Mm -hmm. So you can't depend on, you know, the, the 20, 10-year-ago cellular system any longer. Ahead. So yeah. it is both the hardware infrastructure and the computer uh, techno technology, information and, and uh, communication technology, and it all has to go hand in hand. I mean, it doesn't do you any good to have a, a really productive solar farm, uh, that you, and you, but you can't you know, integrate that into your system. So is this so, another situation where you want a contractor to come and propose, uh, you know, make a proposal to you on on specs that you set up, or is it the utility will actually go out and do this stuff to modernize the grid? Yes, it's a combination. Yes, both. It's, it's a combination of both. In some cases, uh, for some particular projects, we probably we get a consultant to say, you know, have you had experience doing this elsewhere, or uh, you have the expertise that knows how to, uh, you know, to program this sort of thing. We don't, you know, so the the computer programming, the software, the code, something we might do with a consultant. We know our system pretty well, and we know from experience and from other kinds of things, you know, flying drones over poles and seeing that they're rotten and so forth. The parts of it that we just say, no, you know, we're going to have to fix that sooner rather than later, and here's the schedule. And, and we will do that work, or if there's a lot, we may contract that as well. So it, it, that, it's, a, it's a complicated process. Yes, it sounds like because you have, you have all these things, um, and somewhere along the, the line, you have to make a list of all these things. 
Right? I mean, there's a million things to do. I have here a list. There it is. <laughs> yeah. we, that'll be on another right. show. Yeah, we'll exactly. <laughs> I'll tell you when it's done. No, it is very complicated, and that's why we have you know some really great engineers and some really great planners and some really terrific people who are sitting down with us every single day and making sure that one part of this doesn't jump ahead and the other part fall behind. It all has to move along. Uh, you know, you can't have one without the other. And so, it, it, you you know, it is a complex process. And, and the, old, the old problem is, uh, you know, where do you, where do you uh, tie down the technology? Well, is it today's technology, tomorrow's right. technology? How do you know you're at the right place in the, in the curve? Sure. Just like buying a computer. Do I wait for, you know, do I wait for the, the next mm -hmm. Apple uh, phone or do I buy this one and find out in two weeks that it's, you know, that I could have done better? That's part of the whole staging of our renewable energy. Everybody says, oh, do faster, do faster. You know, faster sounds good, but the fact is if you do too fast, you end up with some stuff that doesn't work as well as it might or that it turns out you don't need or that, you know, doesn't fit in with the picture. Well, so you're never going to have a perfect yourself on this kind of thing because it moves under you. You can quote <laughs> No, you're that. absolutely right. You, you can't. But, I mean, you've got, to, you've got to go for as perfect a system. You know, you don't go willy-nilly and, and just say, well, great, let's just, you know, let's just throw this open. That's why you see these RFPs, these requests for proposals are staged. We did a large one, and now we want to finish this kind of allotment. When you say modernization, you're really talking about a whole sequence of steps. Sure. Um, by the way, I, I, I can never forget that uh, your email used to have, but may still have, this great slogan on the bottom that said, hmm. uh, the, the best is, what is it, the perfect is the enemy of the good. Is that what it was? <laughs> I've had that one, but I, <laughs> lately mine, it says, uh, life is what's happening while you're making other plans. Yes, see which that. John Lennon <laughs> said, and you know, it really, that's exactly what we're talking about here. You go ahead, you make plans, and other things happen. I mean, a year ago, if we'd been sitting here talking about this stuff, uh, we would never have imagined that uh, a, a volcanic eruption would take Luna geothermal off the grid. And we think it's coming back, but we don't know when. So, you know, we, we, would, we assumed then and, and that, you know, that would be there and we would build on top of that. Well, you know, good morning, here's the news, and that is that it's not there. Yeah. And it'll get back when we're able to coordinate with the state and the county and, and uh, PGV. I take away from that, we, we all have to be flexible. Absolutely. I mean, we all have to realize that the, the perfect is the enemy of the good and that you know, things change and we will have to change. We right. will have to always be watching to be relevant, to be connected with the technology as it exists and as it as is promised. But let's go back and okay. unpack one thing. Sure. You're talking about going out for utility scale installations of renewable energy. Right. Um, and you're, you're, um, you're, you're vanilla on exactly what kind of energy Mm -hmm. um, and you want people to come and make proposals to you. Right. And, um, you know, so, some will propose solar, some will propose wind. But what is the standard that you are expecting? How do you cast your expectations? How do you, how do you set up the specs for exactly what you want, you know, even if it's uh, vanilla on exactly what, what, how they sure. do it? Well, you start by knowing your system and knowing what, you know, what can be added successfully. And you basically say, Here, here's the amount of energy we need, whether it's in the form of generation or in the form of storage or in the form of these services we've been talking about. You come in and tell us how, you know, how you would, you know, what you propose to do. And then we look at that and we don't just look at the one proposal, we look at all of them and say, you know, in this case, we'll be looking at a, a wider variety. And so we'll, we'll have to figure out you know, we can't just accept only the solars. We may have to we may say, well, we want to have some solar, we want to have some wind, or we may need the storage. We're already going out for more storage on, on our own, and we're trying, we, are, we have a couple of other proposals there. So it, it, is, it is a balancing act. We go out, our, our general terms are, this is how much we need. Yeah, it's a number. It's a number. It's a number so, of kilowatt uh, hours. Megawatt hours, yeah, number of, number of hours of, of generation or generation displacement. And then we say, you know, and there's some, a bunch of other things. You've got to be a reliable company. You've got to have, you know, you've got to be dealing with a technology we've heard of and that's been well, proven elsewhere. If you have to be credible. Yeah, you have to be credible. Yeah, you, if you're you're using real technologies yeah. and, and you're really in business and you're not you're dropping out tomorrow. Exactly, exactly. And we've been very successful at that. You see the companies that are building here now, 
Um, you know, it's gone through a number of changes, Sun Edison and NRG and now Clearwa Clearway, but basically it's a very reputable company that's, that's done a lot of projects. Eurus done a lot of projects across the United States. So that's part of it. But, you know, we don't know what's out there until we put out this, as you say, vanilla or, you know, multi kind of, of uh, you know, fairly open kind of RFP. The last RFP, which we went out, which was a little more restricted, still came back with, I think, three proposals for every one we finally accepted. So some of those we hope will go back to the drawing board and figure out how they can meet. The other, oh, that's one more thing, is, and that is behind all this is always the low price consideration. Uh, within the realm of reality, we want the lowest possible price. And uh, we've done a lot of things to help make that happen because we would never say renewables at any price. Uh, because if you could say renewables at any price, you know, you could do all kinds of things. But you but don't you actually say the price when you're going no, out. No, no. You just look at what comes back and right. see what's cheapest and so forth. So um, what, what's the process on this? So you set the specs. Um, you go to the PUC and say, we'd like to make this RFP. Is that what it is? Right. And the PUC says, okay, that looks good for us. Yeah. And then so approve those specs, the, the whole program. Then you go out in public right. and you, you do an RFP and ask people to, to make proposals. Right. And then you look at the proposals and some will be more credible than others. Right. Some will you think can work and some you think maybe won't work. Um, and then you pick the ones you like, your utility point of view, and then you go back and get them approved one by one and see, and see whether the PUC One by one or in the case, you, know, or you may do a group of them simultaneously, yeah. but basically they're one by one. Yeah, that's exactly right. Then you go through a negotiation for the best, you know, the final and best terms. Make sure that's all, you know, kosher and everybody uh, can meet the commitments, you know, that they have. And then you say, good, go, build it. And, uh, you know, meet your, meet your uh, promises and be online by a certain date. And not until that moment, and this is very significant because I don't think most people understand it. Until that moment, we have not put a, a penny, not a dime of, a cust of customer money or anybody's money into these projects. They're all being financed and paid for and operated by the vendor. So when people say, well, what about this? What about that? What if they don't come through? If they don't come through, they, they, we have not lost, you know, we haven't lost any money. We, yeah. we lost a little, a little yardage perhaps, but we haven't lost any money. So we don't pay for anything until we see that electricity trickling through the, into the grid. And then we pay for only what we get. So if you build a 100 megawatt uh, whatever wind farm and you're only able to generate 50, we're not going to pay you for the 100. We're going to pay you for what you actually put into our system. Right. So it's a constant, um, I don't want to say renegotiation, but constant monitoring of exactly yeah. whether the specs are being met. Absolutely. So how much are you looking for? Well, we're, we're looking for, and it's very hard to describe what we're looking for because it could be all these different technologies, obviously. The numbers for solar and is different from the numbers of solar with storage and so forth. But, you know, I can give you the very rough numbers in megawatt hours, which will probably not mean a lot to you. But uh, 160,000 megawatt hours annually for Oahu, which is roughly the equivalent, if it were solar, of 73 megawatts. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a middling size, large size solar farm. For Maui, we want 65,000 megawatt hours annually, equivalent to 30 megawatts of generation. Kahului power plant is somewhere close to 30,000, 30 megawatts. So that's roughly a one for one, not quite. And for Hawaii Island, we want 70,000 megawatt hours annually, equivalent to roughly 32 megawatts of solar. Uh, plus storage, you know, we need, whether the storage is included in your project or in somebody else's project, we also need you storage. You have to integrate those two. Right. So you might have one which, which needs the other in order to function. Here. Exactly. So, you know, a, a wind farm in particular may not need storage to operate, but for that island, we may need storage because the wind and the solar all together, we need to be able to combine it. And that goes back to the, the complications of the process we've been talking about. Yeah. And it is a, you know, it, it's a real, it's a, if you get excited by that sort of thing, it's a really thrilling thing. I, you, I, I know you do. This sounds like to be 10% or more of, what, of, of, of our total. Uh, demand as far as my electric is concerned. Right? Well, by the time all of these are done, we'll, we'll be well over a thousand megawatts of renewable energy on a system that peaks at around uh, um, 16 to 1800, if I get the number right. I don't know if you're going to. 
What? A little less. A little less. Okay. So, She's, so this alone would be 10% of the whole pie. Well, this is going to get us by, t we're, we have to be at 40% renewable energy by 2030. And we are quite confident, barring, you know, the other, the next volcanic eruption or the un totally unforeseen, we believe we have a, we will be uh, far in excess of 40% by 2030. And uh, as you know, we've got to be at 100% by 2045. We think, again, if everything falls into place, we'll get there a little earlier, get very close. That's a little pretty earlier. exciting, Peter. It's very exciting. And, and it's, uh, you know, when you look at, we often talk about this is a, a marathon and not a sprint, but uh, we started out, you know, 10 years ago, kind of hands and knees crawling along. We've stood up. We're, we're jogging now. We know uh, more. Uh, we know more. There are more, you know, things have changed tremendously. So I think, you know, overall, we're, we are, we're moving faster. We're getting more. You know, this last, we said of the, of the eight projects that went into the commission last year, this was the largest single infusion of uh, renewable energy at one time, one portfolio. And this, new, this next one won't be quite as large. It's a, it's a phase two kind of thing. But yeah, it's getting more and more and bigger and bigger. You know, a few years ago, when we opened a five megawatt, when somebody opened a five megawatt solar farm here on the island, we were all, we were raving about it. Now, 30 megawatt solar facility is kind of, you know, 20 to 30 is sort of the minimum. There's some 60s and so forth. So, we're, you know, we're, we're doing more. Each one is larger. They're coming along faster. It, it is an exciting time. And, and, you know, the good news, I think, for most people is, we got it, you know, got it under control. We're, you know, subject to a lot of things. We are, we are going where people want us to go. That's a perfect segue for us to take a break <laughs> because when we come back, we're going to talk with Maria about leadership, an extension of our conversation from last week um, to see, you know, in this, this next chapter you're describing and on the way to meeting these goals, who's on the playing field? And what, what, is their, what is their voice on the playing field? We'll take a minute off, we'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, a host here at Think Tech Hawaii, a digital media company serving the people of Hawaii. We provide a video platform for citizen journalists to raise public awareness in Hawaii. We are a Hawaii nonprofit that depends on the generosity of its supporters to keep on going. We'd be grateful if you go to thinktechhawaii.com and make a donation to support us now. Thanks so much. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Where are we? We're in Hawaii, a state of clean energy. <laughs> <laughs> so while we had the break, we talked about how long this phase would, would last. And Peter said, well, within, what, three years from now, we'd have it trickling through, so to speak? Yeah, we'd have, we should have the first projects for sure, and probably a number of the projects uh, in place. As I said, uh, 20, September 2022, AES Hawaii, the coal-fired plant, will, is scheduled to go out of business. Mm -hmm. So we want to, we won't have a one-for-one one at that moment, but we will have a substantial amount of what we need to replace them. Mm -hmm. With what we've already got, what's already in the works, we will be in good shape. But one and, thing it tells me yeah. is that, you know, when, when you say that we're going to finish this by 2022, you know, if you ask me cold, 2022, it's a long time from now. No, it's not. Not anymore. It is not a long time anymore to 2022, nor is it a long time to 2030 or 2040 or right. 2045. So those deadlines are coming closer. And I'm really happy to, to hear that Hawaiian Electric is so mindful and working toward meeting those deadlines and cranking that in 
to its process because they're aspirational in many ways. But, you know, if you make it happen, you make it happen. It's no longer aspirational. Well, <laughs> you know, dog years are long. You know, there's seven dog years to every human year. And, and for utility, three years or four years is four months. It's like the day after tomorrow. <laughs> and it's, you know, the time moves very, very quickly. And these projects do just take a long time to get through the process, get built, get tested, and so forth. So, yeah, things are going at, at, uh, at light speed as far as we can. Very complicated, though, you know, because it's technology. Energy is technology, and it's changing all the time. And, um, you know, we as a community, call it the energy community, have to come together. So last week, Maria and I talked about how we do that, who's in charge, who will be in charge, how the government will react um, to the utility, to the consumers, to all the agencies and people and yeah. providers and contractors. I mean, yeah. I mean, you have a list, but the list is by no means complete. There's so many people yeah. involved. And it was a little less of who, you know, how people are going to react and, you know, how that dynamic is going to play out. It was more like who does what, you know, in, in the energy what do you think we concluded we last the, time, Maria? The, well, we started off with the legislature because they're the ones who were setting the policy and the numbers and the means by which we organize ourselves in these efforts, right? And then we talked about the governor because the head of the administrative branch is carrying out the directive of the legislature. And then we talked about the energy office, the energy resources coordinator, DBED, and the energy office and whatnot. And then we got down to the office of planning and we're going to get started on the PUC and so forth. <laughs> <laughs> to a certain extent. Let's you know, get started. Oh, sorry, sorry. sorry. Because, yeah. but, I want to be there but, for Jay, that there's, one. there's a sign on your door that, you know, was talking about if there's something new and different, talk about that first. Yes, and absolutely. so there's an idea that was um, introduced and floating around and being discussed about having the energy office um, functions overseen by a board. State board or this sounds like the authority of, we talked about when thing. Neil Abercrombie yeah. was first elected. Yeah, and so you know, I, I think you've probably had some experience with boards and, and I all have. that. I and have. So we I, all have. You know, since we only have a few minutes left on this, I really wanted to hear your thoughts. You know, I can see some positive aspects of having board involvement because you've got more folks bringing ideas and whatnot. But on the other hand, then the focus of office needs to also be managing the board. I mean, the care and feeding of task forces was something that, you know, had been done by the energy well, office many, many well, times. Well, uh, the concern but, expressed at the yeah. time that Neil, Neil Abercrombie sought, you know, feedback on his notion of having an energy authority was <clears throat> that's a layer of bureaucracy. It costs money. There's political implications. There's delay implications. There's, you know, all kinds of reasons not to do that. <clears throat> when you start talking about a board, um, you're really talking about a board. I mean, if it's had any authority anyway, mm -hmm. it is, is a board like an authority. And so those same, you know, complications and issues still apply. Uh, but, you know, there are boards in DBED. Oh, DBED yeah. has a number oh, yes. of attached agencies that have boards. Yeah, I looked, Some of them more a, active than a, others. Yeah, there's a whole list. I think the state... Statewide, there are like 170 boards and commissions and yeah. whatnot, and yeah. Um, yeah, so it's it's quite an interesting aspect of, yeah. of the discussion. Of course, some of them are yeah. regulatory kinds of boards. Some of them are advisory kind mm -hmm. of boards. Some of them, you know, like cosmetology and things, help to administer the licenses for who is going to be able to do that particular profession. So mm -hmm. while there are, are a lot of boards and not too easy to find volunteers for some of them, uh, there's a variety of different kinds of boards, and that's where, you know, the devil's always in the yeah, details. Yeah. What do you, you know, you have a public utilities commission. What would a board do for state government that the public utilities that's a really commission good question. can't or wouldn't yeah. or isn't able to do right now? And, and um, you know, the energy is a big, uh, although, you know, electricity is very centralized to, a, to the utility and, you know, some companies that deal with the utility, you get into other areas like transportation, and uh, it's a hugely diverse uh, number of players who have their own, uh, you know, reporting to the Department of Transportation mm -hmm. or uh, regula regulators or even to the PUC to go get their licenses for their tourist vehicles. So, 
you know, what the question is. How would it all fit? <laughs> yeah, how would it all fit? Well, what is everybody going to do? Are well, we gonna, and are we going to have a big fight every, you know, in the formation or every time we turn around between one and the other? And, and you know, we, we don't mind being regulated by the Public Utilities Commission, but um, if there's something, somebody else, some other board that's going to have a, any kind of a regulatory authority that puts the utility in a, in a difficult position, you know, Mama said we could do it. Daddy said we couldn't. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. You know, oh, yeah. dear. Oh, dear. Oh, so, that's you a know, valid point. So, yeah. you know, I think a clear idea of, of what and why and not just... Well, oh, can, can you see um, a, uh, a model here where the boards would not, would not get in conflict, uh, where this yeah. board that's contemplated well, by that's, this, that, that, yeah, that this was bill the you have on your desk? That's kind of a thing. So yeah. I guess, you know, to the extent that the energy office was helping to explain to the public and the legislature and the governor and whatnot what the energy options were and the big picture and how it all fits together incorporating the transportation piece the electricity piece you know what resources are available and that's you know. informational right but on the other hand that's then you have studies. developers coming in using the maps and the other information so that they you know can get up to speed more quickly i think as you as you pointed out last time um, you know, so those functions are different. So um, I guess if there was a board that was supporting that aspect of the work, um, but then on the modeling piece or, um, you know, the integrated grid planning. You know, it strikes me this, though. Part of <clears> the, the, the energy office has not been as active as we might have hoped, at least Abercrombie hoped back when. Um, there, and there, it doesn't emulate an authority. It never did. Um, and it has a lot of reports that sit on the shelf, including London Economics, which is still sitting on a shelf somewhere. Um, and so it, it's not really a regulatory organization. It, it isn't. And it wouldn't be, even with a board, I think. And what's interesting, and I, I pose this for reaction by both of you, is that, is that what's happened in the past few years is for the lack of action by an authority type organization or an active energy office. The PUC has taken leadership roles. And the relationship between the PUC and the utility, those are the two ends of the nexus that drives energy policy. The legislature is, you know, the legislature, what can I say? But, but the, the ideas, you know, the implementation of those ideas, the long term vision, that comes from the nexus um, of, of the two. Of, of the utility and the PUC working in. I agree that exciting things are happening yeah. at the PUC yeah. and in the electricity area, yeah. um, especially even with the distributed energy resources side of it, the empowerment of consumers to, you know, meet some of their own needs and provide support to the grid. But the energy piece is much bigger than that. You've got the transportation side of things. You've got the energy planning and policy, yeah. and also, as you mentioned, the communication piece. So. Um, the regulatory functions of the PUC are re were really intended originally to be looking at the monopolies. You know, if you have a monopoly and offering an essential service that the public needs, then you need to make sure that it is serving the needs of the public as well as you know, meeting the requirements like of the investors the, and all the rest of that stuff. Yeah, we like to call it the franchise. There you go. So. <laughs> So but, but that is not the something. extent you, of you the energy You suggest that we're missing something. Case. We're oh. missing some organization, some, some person, some entity of some kind in well, the landscape that is covering these new areas. Are we missing something? Well, you know, I'm not, I think there are things that have to be done. I'm not sure that the approaching it from we need an entity is the answer to the, the, the question. 10, 11 years ago, the state and the utility uh, came up with the Hawaii Clean Energy Initiative. And with the support of the federal government, it was signed on to. Yeah, and actually, the said signed the agreement first, and then the utility thing was well, separate. At any rate, anyway, we're, yes, we'll, carry on. I like, I like my version better. But anyway, <laughs> That's okay. so the point is, there, there was a, a, a unanimity among most of the stakeholders that we had to do these things. Not always about how we had to do them, but that we had to do some, some things. Uh, the objective was achievable. The objective was achievable. That so was, forth. And, that was and the extent everybody came together and yeah. we made, you know, substantial project, hard progress over 10, 12 years. 
with the committee having still having to go to the commission for approval along the way. Part of it, yes. Yeah, part of it. Uh, so you know, we didn't have to at that time. We created something, but we didn't create a massive bureaucracy or a new entity or a bunch of new laws. We kind of agreed, uh, as happens in a lot of you know, it was sort of non, not, well, not non governmental, arm but. But, yeah, no, I'm not suggesting it was simple or easy. I'm just saying we didn't have to create an energy czar or a board of directors or all that kind of stuff that was going to try to enforce this. People said, you know, we, we kind of agree with what we have to do. Let's move forward. And, and you know, it, it, is, it worked to get us to where we are today. Whether we need, you know, some new agreement or what, I don't know. I'm, not, I'm just, I'm always leery of creating, a, as you say, another level of bureaucracy. Uh, that has to, you know, feed, has to feed and be fed, and um, only adds to the, you know, to the difficulty. So, yeah, yeah. So, you know, I, I think, as you said before, this, we, you know, as we discussed, this is not a clear path kind of thing. It's a kind of a stumble along. See where you are, stumble along a little forward, way, further. Way, wayfinding. I, Rather sure, than a roadmap, sure it's wayfinding. Yeah, but at the announcement of the Clean Energy Initiative, you and I were there together. Right. And there was this agreement uh, that Linda Lingle had reached with the utility and the consumer advocate, I think it was, and, and the Federal Department of Energy and all, <clears throat> that was 100 pages long. And, and I, said, I said, Peter, what, what's in there? He says, don't worry, Jay. This is more an agreement to agree than an agreement. <laughs> It was, it's a statement of intention that we are going to somehow work together to work this out. You know, you remember all these things I said. <laughs> I don't know if I remember saying them, and I'm not sure that I did. But at any rate, it, it, you know, it was substantially an agreement that we're going to work together to get along. And we set, so there were certain goals set, and some of them came to fruition, and some of them fell by the, by the wayside. Uh, and, you know, Progress was made on that basis, and especially I don't know about other other jurisdictions, but in Hawaii, a lot of stuff gets happening because people agree to agree, and, and you know we'll we'll, we'll we, it'll we'll, was we'll, that about we'll details? Work on, <laughs> work yeah. on the details well, being we'll work important. On details because yeah. you know at the end of the day, for each, each of the parts that are involved, first of all, things are going to change. Second of all. Um, there are projects that are going to, you know, have people that are concerned about them for other reasons. You say, let's build a wind farm. There's a community there. There's a lot of other things going on. There's the environmentalists who are concerned about the birds, and there's, you know, the bats and all, all kinds. So for an individual project, you have to be open to allow people to come in and say, wait a minute, what about our concern? For an overall picture, you can't get all those people into the same room. All those people are everybody in the state. This is the challenge. So you get the key movers, and the PUC and the utility for sure, and some support from the federal government and the labs were part of that. Uh, we're very, you know, we, we all agreed, and nobody was going to stand up and say this completely stinks. And then we moved from that through different plans and different progress. And, and um, you know, I just don't think you can sit back and say, let's create uh, a, a foolproof system that will do all these things, uh, because as soon as you do that, the next day you're going to run into something that right. you didn't plan for. And we have to be faithful to our own sense of evolution, our own identity. We're out of time. Maria, can you close? Sure. Um, okay, so we didn't get through the list of who does what in energy. In fact, we added more to the list. <laughs> but it's been a very interesting and stimulating discussion, and good things are happening, but there's a lot more work to do. It's good to talk about these things because too often we're kind of in our, you know, we're, we're looking at this project or this RFP and nobody's stepping back. And you're always stepping back, Jay. That's the thing well, about it. I say the same for you guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. We have to continue this conversation. Thanks. Thanks very much, Hi. Peter. Good to be here. Maria, as always. Aloha.